Hello, friends. Hello, hello. Happy Friday. Happy Friday night. So, um, I want so bad to say Thursday, but it's not Thursday. It's Friday. Hello, Ladybug. Hello, Alyssa. Hello, y'all. Happy Friday. I hope you're having an amazing, or I hope you've had an amazing day. Um, we are going to read a little bit about Esther tonight. I'm so excited to jump into um, our second part of Women of the Bible series. Um, if you are new here, say hello so that I can welcome you to this little girl gang. Hello, Ayla. Um, I'm so excited about what I have to share with you guys tonight. I'm in a different location, so I'm in my living room right now, and my light, my ring light kind of overpowers everything, so we're just going to kind of work with it. Hello, Brandy. Hello, Pam. Um, hello, y'all. I have missed y'all. I was not here last week, and then we've kind of had to postpone things this week. Um, just a lot been going on, and Friday night works for me anyways, because hello, Paige. Welcome to our little Bible study. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Brittany. Um, <laughs> I'm getting such teacher vibes right now. I think it's a TV and the t-shirt. Girl, I went all out. <laughs> Thank you, girl. Um, and so, anyways, I don't even know what I was getting at. I lost train of thought. Um, so, I did have to delay it a little bit, but I'm so excited to jump into the second part of this series. Um, I have my Women of the Bible shirt on. If you have yours on, then make sure you let me know because I think it's so sweet that we all could just be wearing the same shirt and be like lots of twinsies. Um, yeah, we're going to be jumping into Esther tonight. Um, I have a lot to share with y'all. I'm so excited to jump into God's Word and see what He has for us. Um, so, Friday night is like kind of, this is a little, like, most people, you're like, how did you spend your Friday night? And we're like, we spent our Friday nights on TikTok Live, reading the Bible, jumping into Esther, and reading God's Word, and submersing ourselves to Scripture. And y'all, no other Friday night plan could trump that, if you ask me. Um, and so, anyways, I just want to um, let you know that just because you're not maybe with the world, and what the world's doing tonight on Friday night, um, doesn't mean that you're not cool, okay? Because literally, I have my slippies on, and I would have worn my jammies, but I was like, Kimmy, like, you can't let them know that you're that much of a homebody, but I'm definitely a homebody, so, um, thank you so much. I'm so excited to jump into this. So, a couple, like, little, like, housekeeping things I want to talk about. First of all, my phone's on 20%, praying to Jesus that it stays alive, um, and we can get through this Bible study because my phone charger is all the way upstairs. So we might have to take a quick little intermission if we have to. Um, second of all, I made this cute little background for y'all because I thought y'all would enjoy it. Um, and I also want to let y'all know, hang on, I gotta get up. Um, so I want to let y'all know something real quick. Oh, thank you, Brandy. So if you go to, um, I'm going to show y'all up here. Just because I always have this question. If you go to YouTube, like I just went to YouTube.com and you search Kimberly Wallace, which is my name, um, two users will come up and I know it's kind of hard for y'all to see, but that's me right there. And it will bring you to my YouTube channel. That's all you have to do. If you want to go to my bio here on TikTok and you can click that little square. Actually, I'll show you because we're doing full-on thing, intro tonight. <laughs> um, if you go to my little um, bio here on TikTok, like there's my picture, you're going to see a little square over here. Obviously, I'm on my computer, so you can't see it. But there will be like a little square, and it will link you to my um, Instagram and my YouTube. Or like I said, you can just go, hello from South Carolina. Hello, Miss Cheryl. I missed you too. Oh, my word. I miss all my sweet friends. Um, but you can just go to YouTube and type Kimberly Moss. This is where all of my hello. videos are. Hold on. We'll make this full screen so y'all can see. This is where all of my past Bible studies are. So, every night after I finish Bible study, I put it on here. So, every night. Um, so, after this uploads here on TikTok, I will upload it to my computer to YouTube. You can watch it tomorrow. You can share it with your friends. Whatever. I also have some vlogs on here, too. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things with my YouTube channel. But now, I mostly just use it for, like, Bible study. Hello, Miss D. I missed y'all. Oh, my word. I love y'all so much. I just, I look so forward to this night and 
yeah life's been crazy but anyways i just want to show y'all that because you can find everything there okay and all they're all uploaded like i got everything like i have the first part of our women of the bible um girl got faith and we talk about ruth um yay hello hello welcome if i got any new people on here um, so our first part of Women of the Bible, we talked about Ruth, and then tonight we're going to move into Esther. So I just kind of want to put that up there for y'all, just in case, like, you weren't sure exactly, um, how to navigate, okay? <laughs> I'm going to try and get this back up here. There we go. Um, is this Bible not? Yes, it is. I just wanted to show y'all, um... Okay, I just want to show y'all how to get to my YouTube channel if you need to. All right, next little house um, keeping thing. Oh, yeah, girl, here are my nails. They are pink and orange, and then this one is like sparkly pink, orange, purple, and blue. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> um, my shirt is from... I have not changed to Fridays. Um, i just doing it tonight because I couldn't do it last night. So, we're going to keep normal schedule Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For all my Bible studies, of course, they're always going to be linked on my YouTube if you miss them. Um, but I just needed to do tonight. My shirt is from my sister's boutique, Meg Pine Co. Um, I'm not sure if she has any more of these available. We did do like a run, and so I know a lot of my girlies, Bible study girlies, have shirts. Um, so if you've got one, you've got yours on tonight. I love it. Um, also, my dog is snoring, and she's a very loud... Yay, thank you so much! Um, she's a very loud... Um snore so how do i share bible night so you can go down here uh miss cheryl and you'll see like a little arrow that looks like that click that and you can share it and then also you can share it from my youtube channel once it uploads later my bible is a she reads truth bible it is a christian standard version bible i love it it's a great beginner bible it's a great bible for someone who's well seasoned um there is a he reads she truth so if there's any male in your life that you feel like needs a bible or you want to give them a bible or recommend a bible that one's great too so, um, my Bible is the She Reads Truth. I have the coral canvas one, but mine is painted, okay? And it has had much better days, but I'm never repainting it because it's very sentimental and it's been through a lot of things in my life. But we're going to get started. Go ahead, grab your Bibles, use your mobile app if you have to, however you need to, however you need to work it. And we're going to turn to Esther. So, it is in the Old Testament. And I say Esther. <laughs> Esther. <laughs> I'm not sure why I said that. I said that kind of funny, Lord. Okay, so we're going to turn to Esther in the Old Testament. It is right after the book of Ezra, if you need reference. If you don't know where Esther's at, go to your table of contents, girlfriend. It's okay. Um, Tiffany, I'm not sure. I think all of the Reads Truth versions are all CSV. I've never seen one that's KJV, but... Um, you could definitely look. I have it linked in my Amazon storefront as well as my Like to Know It. Whichever platform you prefer, it's there for your access. So go and get you one. Um, I think it's like $30 around that price range. And this thing is like, it's just very near and dear to my heart. So I love it. I love this Bible. It's like my first big girl Bible and it's just been through a lot with me. It's seen my happy days and my sad days and I just love it. Um, Okay, so I want to point out two things before we get going. Um, first thing, I am a no Bible professional. Um, I fail. I fall short. I'm not perfect. I have to use a table of contents on the daily when it comes to reading God's Word. Um, God's Word is not meant to be a one and done kind of thing, um, but it is meant to be understood. God would never put something in front of us that we would not be able to know his heart through and be able to understand. And so I just want to remind you that it's okay if you don't get it. It's okay if it doesn't make sense to you. It's okay if it's a little confusing at first. It's okay. It literally is. We're doing this together. I'm not going to know the answers to everything. You're not going to know the answers to everything. Even some of the most like famous theologians that study the Bible and study history of the Bible every single day don't know everything. There's going to be names in here that I have no idea how to pronounce, and we're just going to roll with it. I also have quite the southern, um, southern twang, if you haven't noticed. So a lot of the names I will butcher. Just bear with me. Be patient with me. Have grace for me. Um, we'll have grace for each other. But I just want to let you know that it's okay. Like, it's okay if you don't understand. If you're reading a version of a Bible, like if you've got a CSV or something like that, 
and you don't understand, go to Google and type in translations, KJV or whatever, a message Bible. A lot of times the message Bibles are a lot, they put more context with it, so it's a little bit easier to understand. Thank you, Bridget. Um, also, if I don't answer your question, I'll come back to you and I'll try my hardest to answer you or acknowledge your sweet comments. Um, but yeah, I just want to say, I'm not a Bible professional. I use my table of contents on the daily. There's names that I'm going to butcher. There's things that I'm going to be like, wait, what, God? <laughs> but the more, what I love so much about the Bible is the more that you read it, um, the more that God reveals himself to you. Getting yourself into the Word is the most, in, like, is the greatest, most enriching, most nutrient dense thing that you can do for your spiritual life. And I, I want to just show you how good and like how the goodness that flows from just submersing yourself to scripture it's just amazing so we're going to jump in i'm going to say a quick prayer um for us as we jump in and yeah so um get your bibles turn to esther and let's pray girlfriend <laughs> okay dear lord thank you for this day thank you for this night thank you for allowing me to get on here and just jump into your word god i pray that everything that we read tonight just shows your heart. Lord, I pray that you reveal to us through your scripture. Thank you for giving me this platform, blessing me with this platform so that I can get on here and share your word and do the great mission, Lord. I pray that whatever we learn tonight and whatever we are able to just really grasp, Lord, that we are able to use that throughout the rest of this weekend. Oh, Lord, protect us and guide us as we move um, into next week. Lord, I just pray that Whatever it is that you want on our hearts tonight, that you really just allow us to grasp in the way that only you would allow. I say all of this in your sweet and most precious name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to jump in. Um, we, so I told y'all when we started Ruth that we are going to do this in like a very like kind of elementary way because... Sometimes when you read the Bible, it's like you, <laughs> yay! Um, sometimes when you read the Bible, it's like you have to know what the Bible is talking about. And I don't believe in that. I believe that there's some things in the Bible, and every time you read the Bible, it's different. Like, you're going to take something different from it. That's just how it is. We know God's a mysterious God. It can, the Holy Spirit can activate in a way that it didn't before. And so, um... I just want to say that, like, we're just going to read this like we're reading a novel, like we're reading a um, fiction book. So, let's jump into this. Uh, I do have a moderator on here. Thank you, Tiffany. I forgot I added you as mod last time, but thank you so much. Um, all right, let's jump into it. So, we are in Esther. We're in verse 1. Um, Esther is a rather um, small book of the Bible, so I'm thinking this is going to be two Bible study nights. Um, I'm going to try to cut us off about, mm, I say 10, but like maybe like 945. Not that I'm trying to quench the spirit of the Lord, but just I know it's Friday night and got maybe have big Saturday plans or something like that. So, okay, let's start at verse 1. So, it says, these events took place during the days of A. Okay, I don't know who A is, but I know A is going to be like a king. He's going to be like a ruler. Um, I did not reschedule to Friday, so we're still Thursdays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But I couldn't do it yesterday, so we're doing it tonight. Okay, so these events took place during the days of this person called A. We're just going to call him A, okay? Um, getting it back to little pre-little wire days. <laughs> um, who ruled 127 provinces from India to Kush. In those days, King A reigned from his royal throne into the fortress of Susa. He held a feast in the third year of his reign for all of his officials and staff the army of Persia and Media, the nobles and the officials from the provinces. He displayed the glorious wealth of his kingdom and the magnificent splendor of his greatness for a total of 180 days. So first of all, we know we've got this ruler, we've got this king, his name is A. Hello and welcome! Um, his name is A and in his third year of reign, so after he's been reigning for third, three years, his third anniversary, he's going to hold this big old feast and there's going to be lots of people invited. Um, those people include, um, I gotta find it, um, the army of Persia and Media, his officials and staff, the nobles and the officials from the provinces, um, and he 
did, it says, He displayed the glorious wealth of his kingdom and the magnificent splendor of his greatness for a total of 180 days. So this happened for 180 days, okay? We're at verse 5. At the end of this time, the king held a week-long banquet in the garden courtyard of the royal palace for all the people, from the greatest to the least who were present in the fortress of Susa. So after he held... Hello, hello! Um, after he held um, the little... What do they call the first thing? Um, what do they call it? A feast. So he held a feast for 180 days, which he invited all these people to in his third year of reign. And then after that, he held a week-long banquet in the garden, and he invited everybody from Susa. Um, okay, so it says, White and blue linens were hanging and were fastened with fine white and purple linen cords to silver rods on marble columns. I love, like, imagery, y'all. And, like, even when I read, like, a... Uh, fiction book or whatever i love imagery i love colors i love when it explains things because i could be reading this and i'm like okay okay like this person this person this. but when you start to like involve like things that show me what it looked like like that i can imagine i can like really like get myself into the story okay so um so we had all these linens and stuff hanging it says gold and silver couches were arranged on a mosaic pavement of red field spar marble mother of pearl and precious stones this sounds pretty fancy, okay? Imagine going to a banquet, okay? Yeah, it puts you there, yeah. Imagine going to a banquet. We got all these fancy linens hanging, blue, white. We got these purple cords hanging. Then we've got these fancy couches placed up and set up, and they're on pavements made of mother of pearl. Like, I have a mother of pearl ring. It's beautiful. Mosaic. I'm thinking, like, like stained glass and, like, a church. It's got mother of pearl. It's got marble. It's got red feldspar and, like, these precious stones. So, it's basically just telling us that this is fancy, and King A, he be holding a fancy banquet, okay? Um, okay, so then it says, Drinks were served in an array of gold goblets, each with a different design. Royal wine flowed freely according to the king's bounty. So here we know right now that the king is okay with a lot of wine be flowing. Like, forget the chocolate fountain. We want wine to be readily available to all of our guests. Um, it says, The drinking was according to royal decree. There are no restrictions. So no restrictions. Anybody can drink. Um, the king had ordered every wine steward in his household to serve whatever each person wanted. Queen Vashti also gave a feast for the, for the women of King A's palace. So we've got King A and we've got Queen Vashti. We've got two different people. Um, how do you know personally what scriptures to read? Um, I'm just reading out of Esther right now. And where am I reading from? Right now I'm on verse 9. Chapter 1, verse 9. So, so King A gives a banquet for all the people, whatever. He's got wine, lots of wine. Everybody can have it. It's under his decree. There's no restrictions. And then Queen Vashti gives a feast for the women of his palace. Okay? Um, okay. So, on the seventh day, when the king was feeling good from the wine, it says, A... A Ashacharus, y'all have no idea how to say that, commanded Muhammad, Bistha, Horbana, Bigtha, Abagtha, Zathar, and Carcass. <laughs> y'all have no idea. I just totally just butchered all those, but it's okay. We're still reading. The seven, the seven eunuchs, um, or, yeah, the seven eunuchs who personally served him. So these are his servants, basically, it's saying. So King A had seven servants, and these are who served him after he was feeling good from the wine, y'all. So, like, he was, like, he had had his fair share of wine after this banquet, after the seventh day. And then it says, to bring Queen Vashti before him with her royal crown. He wanted her to show off her beauty to the people and the officials because she was very beautiful. So first off, we know that Queen, that King A is feeling good from this wine. He's had his fair share, um, and we already see a little bit of corruption or morale, of morale here in Esther. We're already seeing that. Um, and I'm going to, like... I'm not going to get into, like, the full picture of things and probably probably until next Bible study. Um, but there is a lot of significance to the fact that there is a lot of more, more moral corruption within the book of Esther. But it's very significant, and it's there's a reason it's in the Bible, right? God would not have ordained it to be in the Bible if it wasn't significant to what he's trying to tell us in his heart. So, um, that's our first sign of, like, moral corruption is that there's lots of wine, He's feeling good from the wine. It's distorted him. 
and um, he wants Queen Vashti to come over and to like share her beauty for just all the people. Basically, have a beauty pageant. Like he's like, come over and share your beauty. Um, and he tells his seven servants to go get her, to bring her over, and to let her share her beauty and how beautiful she is. But Queen Vashti refused to come at his command that was delivered by his servants. And the king became furious and anger burned within him. So we see anger. We see him being furious. We see him having too much, him having too much wine. And we see him being declined by the queen. All right, we're now in verse 13. It says, The king consulted the, consulted the wise men who understood the times. For it was his normal procedure to confer with experts in law and justice. The most trusted ones were Karshina, Shathar, Amatha, <laughs> Tarish, all these people. Okay, y'all, I ain't even gonna sit here and try to, I ain't even gonna sit here and try to pronounce them. So he goes to these people um, who were experts in law and justice. Um, and they were seven officials of Persia and Media who had personal access to the king and occupied the highest positions in the kingdom. The king asked, according to the law, what should be done with Queen Vashti since she has effued my command that was delivered by my servants? Okay, so he's basically saying, what's her punishment? Because I commanded her to come over here and to show off her beauty, and she declined this. So, like, I'm coming to you as people of law, people of order, people of um, justice. I'm reading from CSV. Megan, yes. Um, so he's like, what should happen to her? Like, is she going to get stoned? Are we going to kill her? Is she going to go? Like, what, what's her punishment? Because she didn't listen to me. So tell me, tell me, uh, tell me what we got to do here for this. So that's basically what King A is saying. Um, we're on verse 16. So it says, Mamukin said in the presence of the king and officials, Queen Vashti has wronged not only the king, but all the officials and the peoples in every one of King A's provinces. Because remember, this banquet was for all of his people, officials and everything. And so not only has she declined the king, but she's also kind of made a fool of the king because everybody that was expecting her to come and have some beauty pageant to show off her beauty and some elegant display, she's failed them too because she didn't. So they're like, not only has she failed the king and not gone for his commands and his orders, but she's also like not made an appearance and not like, you know, done what she's supposed to do. She didn't follow command. So what's her punishment? So, um, it says here, it says, um, for the queen's action will become public knowledge to all the women and cause them to despise their husbands and say, King A ordered Queen Vashti brought before him, but she did not come. Before this day is over, the noble women of Persia and Media who hear about the Queen's Act will say the same thing to all king officials, resulting in more contempt and fury. If it meets the king's approval, he should personally issue a royal decree. Let it be recorded in the laws of the Persian and Medes so that it cannot be revoked. Vashti is not to enter King A's presence, and her royal position is to be given to another woman who is more worthy than her. Okay, so they're basically saying, let this, like, cause a, not a revolution, but let this spread, okay? Let all women um, say to their husbands what it said right here. Um, yeah, it's, hold on, y'all. I keep losing my, I keep losing my space. I keep losing my place. Um, what does it say right here? Yeah, cause them to despise their husbands and say, King A ordered Queen Vashti to be brought before him, but she did not come. And they're saying, the noble women of Persia and Media who hear about this act will say the same thing to all king officials, resulting in more contempt and fury. And then if it meets the king's approval, he should personally issue a royal decree, and he will it will be recorded in the laws of the Persians so that it cannot be revoked, that Vashti is not to enter into the king's presence, and her royal position is to be gone. So Vashti didn't listen to the king's commands, and she basically can't be in his presence anymore, and she um, is no longer queen because she didn't listen to his commands, okay? Kind of gives us um, how men and women were treated a little bit during this time, which I, 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 I Lord, y'all, my words is twisted. Um, 
it kind of shows shows you the role of men and women during this time and I really like to understand that because a lot of times when we read something in the Bible we relate it to how things operate today and it's very different and you have to understand that there is a disconnect and you have to read it in the like perspective of that you know what I mean okay so let's keep going the decree, so this is verse 20, the decree to the king issues will be hard throughout his vast kingdom. So all women will honor their husbands from the greatest to the least. The king and his counselors approved the proposal and he followed Mamukin's advice. He sent letters to all the royal provinces, to each province in its own script and each ethnic group in its own language, that every man should be master of his own house and speak in the language of his own people. So he has... Uh, proposed this decree and he sent it out to all of the people and said that every man should be master of his house and speak in the language of his own people and we're gonna go from there we're at chapter two i want to make sure i space this out so yeah okay so chapter two sometime later when king a's rage had cooled down so he's like okay like we've done something about it we're gonna see what happens and go from there and it says he remembered vashti and what she had done okay Second little little pause here. He remembered Vashti and what she had done. First of all, if you're that angry and you're that furious and you've caused such a big uproar and a big, like, almost revolution where you're from, like, imagine, like, being so angry, so mad, so whatever, that you, like, cause people to, like, totally, like, cause such disarray in households all over your town. Like, do you not think you're going to remember that for the rest of your life? But we have to remember that King A during this time, he was um, a little intoxicated. He was drinking and he it told us that he had had plenty of wine from this banquet that lasted 180 days or that lasted seven days a week. And we know that at this time that like he's not in his right mind. Obviously, when you drink and you're intoxicated, that's what I'm saying. It offers a sense of moral corruption from the get-go in Esther. And I think that's going to be really important to what this is going to reveal to us at the end. And so it says, once he had cooled down, you know, he's out of his rage, the anger is gone. Um, it says, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decided against her. Yeah, he had too much wine. That's the thing. Like, he was mad and he caused such a disarray. He caused such a commotion. And now he's like, oh, like, I remember this now. Like, King A, why didn't you remember it beforehand? <laughs> okay, so um, it says, The king's personal attendant suggested, let, search, let a search be made for beautiful young virgins for the king. Right, verse 3. It says, Let the king appoint commissioners in each province of his kingdom so that they may gather all the beautiful young virgins to the harem, to the harem at the fortress of Susa. Put them under the supervision of Hega, the king's servant, keeper of the women and give them the required beauty treatments then the young wo woman who pleases the king will become queen instead of Vashti and this su suggestion pleased the king and he did accordingly so at this time they're like okay gather all of the virgins have them come here let them be under the control um, of the keeper the women keeper who I cannot remember what I just said his name was um harem no he got H-E-G-A-I, however you say that. Um, so they're going to be there, and then they're going to receive beauty treatments, and they're going to, like, be to the standard of what the king would want, which y'all know. Y'all know, living in the world we live in today, like, reading that makes your tummy twirl. Um, and so, anyways, it says, and then whichever woman pleases the king, um, that'll be the one that becomes the new queen, okay? All right, so we're at verse 5, chapter 2 in Esther. It says, in the fortress of Susa, there was a Jewish man named Mordecai. He was son of Jar, no, Mordecai, son of Jar, son of Shema, son of Kish, a Benjaminite. Kish had been taken into exile from Jerusalem with the other captives when King En of Babylon took King Jeconiah of Judah into exile. Mordecai was the legal guardian of his cousin Hadash, that is Esther, because she had no father or mother. So this is where we kind of get our next introduction. So we've got this young man, this man, Jewish man, that's important, named Mordecai, and he's the son of so-and-so. And he's taken into ex or his father had been taken into exile from Jerusalem. And Mordecai was the legal guardian of his cousin, Hadashah, that is Esther. 
So they're cousins. Esther and Mordecai are cousins, meaning they are from the same bloodline, meaning they both have Jew, um, Jewish in them. They're both Jewish. Did I say that right? They're both Jewish. Okay, <laughs> y'all might have to correct me. Y'all know sometimes I get a little, I get a little excited. And I say the wrong thing. Okay, um, because she had no father or mother, so we know that she is basically an orphan. Okay. Yes, the puppy is snoring. She's loud. I know. Um, okay, so the young woman had a beautiful figure, okay, and was extremely good looking. When her father and mother die, died, Mordecai had adopted her as his own daughter. So they're cousins, but Mordecai takes Esther in as his own daughter, and she is beautiful. She has a pretty figure. She's just elegant. She's just beautiful, okay, and she's going to come into play, and you can probably guess what's going to happen next because we're on the search for a queen, and we got a beautiful virgin who is an orphan who has come into the hands of Mordecai. And we're just going to keep reading on from there because I'm excited to see what Esther is going to reveal to us. And so it says, When the king's command and edict became a public knowledge, and when many young women were gathered at the fortress of Susa um, under Haggah's supervision, which is the woman keeper, Esther was taken into the palace into the supervision of Haggah. The young wo woman pleased him and gained his favor so that he accelerated the process of the beauty treatments and the special diet that she received. He assigned seven hand-picked female servants to her from the palace and transferred her and her servants to Haram, Haram's best quarters. Verse 10, it says, Esther did not reveal her ethnicity or her family background because Mordecai had ordered her not to make them known. So she's Jewish. Mordecai said, don't let them know that you're Jewish. And she comes in and the, um, good night. Um, so she comes in and the, the Haggah, the, the keeper of women within the king's palace, um, he like speeds up her treatments and goes ahead and hurries up and puts her on the special diet. Maybe because he had an inkling that she would be the one who the king chose. I don't know. Let's figure it out. So, um, she didn't reveal her family background, family history, anything like that, her ethnicity, um, because Mordecai told her not to. We're going to find out why in a minute. It says, every day Mordecai took a walk in front of Haram's courtyard to learn how Esther was doing and to see what was happening to her. So, he checks in on her. Um, verse 12, it says, during the year before each young woman's turn to go to King A, the Haram regulation required her to receive beauty treatments with all of M-Y-R-R-H, y'all, myrrh. Does anybody know what that is? For six months, and then with perfumes and cosmetics for another six months. Y'all, could you imagine, like, in order for her to be queen, they got to, like, go through these, this 12, this year-long beauty treatment where they're, like, showered in perfume, and they're, like, on a special diet, and they're, like, could you imagine? Like, the Christmas fragrance. Okay. It's like a bomb. Okay. Myrrh. Myrrh. Okay. It's pronounced myrrh, I believe. Thank y'all. Okay. So, this is what this is about. I want us to come together. I want us to be a conversation. I don't know everything. I want y'all to help me. Okay? Okay. So, um, so th they had to do this in order to, like, even be seen by the king. In order just to have his glance. Like, they got to go through this year-long session of beauty treatments. Could you imagine? Okay. Um... Okay, when the young woman would go to the king, she was given whatever she requested to take with her from, from the harem to the palace. She would go in the evening and in the morning, and she would return to a second harem under the supervision <clears throat> of the king's servant. Um, and, she, and she never went to the king again unless he desired her and summoned her by name. So they would go, um, yeah, we're in the book of Esther. So they would go to the king. Um, they would take with them whatever the king asked of them. And um, they would go in the morning, they would go in the evening, and they would go back. Um, and then they would only go back to the king if he liked her, basically. If she was pretty, if he had interest in her, you know, if he thought that she would be a good fit, that's the only reason she would go back. If not, they'd ne he'd never call on her again. So, we're going to jump forward. Okay, verse 15, we're in chapter 2. Esther was the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had adopted her as his own daughter. When her turn came to go to the king, she did not ask for anything except what Haggah, the king's servant, which is the keeper of women, um, suggested. Esther gained favor in the eyes of everyone who saw her. She was taken to King A in the palace in the tenth month, the month in the tenth month, which was the seventh year of his reign. Um, the king loved Esther more than all of the other women. 
she won more favor and approval from him than many of the other virgins who came before him. He placed the royal crown on her head and made her queen. So Esther is queen, um, and she's beautiful. The king just loves her. He admires her beauty. Um, he held a great banquet for all of his officials and staff, and it was Esther's banquet. Okay, so we know that he had a banquet to begin with. He had a, like, lazy river of wine is what I imagine it. And um, we know that he, like, this was a big deal. But now that he's got a new queen, Vashti, you know, she's lost her, her power, her position. And Esther has become queen now. Okay? It says, he freed his provinces from tax payments and gave gifts worthy of king bounty. Okay? So, now we're at verse 19 where Mordecai saves the king. Okay, so when the virgins were gathered a second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. Esther did not reveal her family background or her ethnicity as Mordecai had directed. She obeyed Mordecai's orders as she always had done while he raised her. Obviously, Mordecai has stepped up to the plate. She's become her daddy. Um, he's become her daddy pretty much. And um, Mordecai's sitting at the gate, and he sees Esther there. He knows that she still has not um, revealed her ethnicity, her family background. Basically, the king or nobody knows that she's Jewish is what they're trying to say here. And so it says, um, verse 21, it says, During those days while Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Big Than and Teresh, I know I'm saying that wrong, y'all. Bear with me. Two of the king's servants who guarded the entrance became infuriated and planned to assassinate the king. Okay. Plot twist. <laughs> Mordecai is sitting at the gate, and he overhears conversation between two of the king's servants that uh, they're about to assassinate and get rid of the king. So basically, what do you think is going to happen? What's going to happen, I can just already predict this, is that Mordecai is going to find this out. He's going to tell Esther, and then Esther's going to tell the king. Okay, so let's let's read. Um, so when Mordecai learned of the plot, he reported it to Queen Esther. Yep, and she told the king on Mordecai's behalf. Y'all, I've skimmed Esther. I haven't totally delved delved dove into Esther. Um, so yeah, it's kind of okay. So y'all, I'm getting all over the place. <laughs> can y'all tell? All right, we're at verse twenty three. When the report was investigated and verified, both men were hanged on the gallows. This event was recorded in the historical record in the king's presence. Okay, so I'm at verse 3 right now, and my phone's going to die any minute. I'm trying to think if I want to. I think I'm going to stop there because we've got, not verse 3, chapter 3. I'm sorry, y'all. We've gotten through three chapters. I think I'm, or two chapters. Yeah, we've gotten through two chapters. I think I'm going to stop there um, because I want us to, like, really be able to, I don't know, have a lot of sessions of these so we can, like, just really feel our spirit and really, like, I want to take our time with Esther. I don't want to rush it. I want to be able to, like, come back to it and kind of pull it apart and really find out what the Lord is trying to speak to us. And, and why is this important? You know, when we read Ruth, after we read Ruth, we could see what the Lord was trying to tell us and trying to reveal about his heart. And I just love, like, knowing that I can just read this. And, like, tonight when I get in bed, I could read this again and I could find something else. You know, I feel like every time... It's just revealed to me in a different manner. And so I want to take our time. I want to really be able to just like take the next week and just study the first two chapters. Read about it. Watch videos about it. Rewatch this Bible study. Whatever you have to do to fully be able to understand what's happening here and to fully be able to gather and, you know, see perspective from God's heart in this. Um, I will say one thing real quick, y'all, though. You will notice as we read Esther and as we continue to read that God is never mentioned in this book of the Bible, in Esther. And you will notice the more you read, you'll be looking for it. And you'll probably think, that's a little crazy because this is literally the Bible. Like, this is like put forth by God himself. Why is he not included? And it is definitely for a reason, definitely for a purpose. It is so significant. And I just want to say a couple things. First of all, we have noticed from the get-go that there's a lot of moral corruption here. We're already seeing, like, drinking and lots of drinking. Not just, you know, drinking a little, a little glass of wine. But we're seeing, like, a lot, a lot of drinking to the point where the king didn't even know what he had done. He didn't even remember what had happened. We're also seeing um, things like women kind of being placed... Um, I don't even know that right word. Somebody may have to help me with this. But women being kind of like 
more of an object and not necessarily a person, a human, you know, not re necessarily respected in a sense. Um, so we're seeing that. We're seeing drink, you know, alcohol, lots of alcohol, intoxication. We're seeing moral corruption. Um, but we're also not seeing God. No, not physically, but deliberately. We're not seeing him deliberately. It doesn't say anything, anything about that yet. It's not going to say anything about that. It's not a matter of being yet. But we're going to learn something at the end of Esther that um, it's just amazing. What the, Like the significance of Esther in the Bible is so much, y'all. And I think what everybody is going through at some point, whether you're going through it now or it's a previous season, or, you know, if you haven't gone through it now, then you will go through it. And I just think it's so important, the lesson that Esther teaches us through through this through this whole book. So, I'm excited to continue this. Um, Y'all, you can watch this later over on my YouTube channel. Um, or watch it tomorrow, whatever. Share it with your friends. Um, yeah, you can go to my YouTube channel. My next live will be next Thursday. Not even sure of the date. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will jump into part two of the Esther series. Um, real quick, if you have... So, my last for Ruth, it was Girl Got Faked. If you have a cute little caption or like little name... Um, for this YouTube series of Esther, then let me know because I would love to use that in the thumbnail of my YouTube video because I like to be creative. <coughs> I like to be creative, Kathy, sometimes, but I'm not the most creative all the time. So if y'all have something, um, then let me know what a cute little name would be to title our series of Esther um, because I would love that. I'd love your ideas. So I'll give it just a minute for y'all to put them through if you want to. I'm placing a bookmark here because we're going to continue next week. I'm so excited. Join me next week so that you can um, you can learn more about Esther and why is it important and why is it, it significant why is God not mentioned one bit throughout the whole book. Um, thank you so much, Caitlin. Oh, my word, I love y'all. I love y'all. Y'all are my sweet little pumpkin pies, and this, I just love this, um, for such a time as this. Yes, so, um, my favorite Bible verse is Esther 414, and we're gonna get there, and I'm so excited, so, so, so excited. Like, that's my favorite. Like, it's plastered on my mirror in my room, um, so I'm so excited to, like, delve into that, that verse a lot with y'all throughout what we're reading in Esther, um, how do you decide what to read? Do you have a Bible reading plan? I do not. So we're in the series right now, just Women of the Bible. I got this shirt, and it just really inspired me to just, you know, I'm all about girl empowerment. I'm all about being holy women, women of the word and not the world. And I just want to show you guys, you know, how God used these women of the Bible in their own season and in their own situation and circumstance. And I just really wanted it to just empower us as women of God to have faith and to have trust and to have bravery. And that's just where I began with that. So, um, anyways, I love you. I hope you're having an amazing night. Um, I pray that God speaks to you tonight. I pray that he uses you um, in a way like never before. And if you're like, Kimmy, like, what does that mean? Like, you're kind of talking out of your head. Um, tonight, when you say your prayer, just say, Lord, use me where I'm at. Like, if you're like a stay-at-home mama, Lord, use me. Use me to minister to my children. Use me to minister to my neighborhood. Use me to share your goodness in the Starbucks um, checkout line. Use me, Lord. If you're, you know, a, work, a, a working mama and you go to work, you work a nine-to-five, every day, Lord, use me at my job. Use me with my coworkers. Use me on my commute back home. If you're a student, Lord, use me at my school, on my online, you know, school. Use me at my, on my campus, you know, whatever it is. If you're a content creator, Lord, use me. Use this platform for my goodness. Use me however you need to. And Lord, just because it's happening, just because things right now are not what I expect, things right now are not going the way I imagine, things right now are not what I would think that your plan was for me, Lord, doesn't mean you're not working and use me in the midst of it all. So I love you. I hope you have an amazing night and I will talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>